Welcome to the world of amazing nighttime animals. Oh, hi, Henry. I thought you were sleeping. I'd like to, but I can't. Why? Uh, I'm just one wide awake lizard. Cousin Rex and I have been surfing all day. I'm so tired, but I just can't get to sleep. Maybe I should try counting sheep. Try something more interesting. Try spring hairs. Spring hairs? I bet you haven't seen one of these before. One. That's because they sleep Two. during the day and only come Three. out at night. They're nocturnal or nighttime Five. animals. Six. It's no good. I've tried hot milk. Counting spring hairs doesn't work. Maybe I'm turning into a knock on turtle animal. That's nocturnal, Henry. Yeah. Look at all these daytime creatures. They've been busy all day, so now they're... Yawning like crazy! Even the chameleon is getting comfortable in his burrow. Talk about heavy eyelids. These diurnal animals are all ready for some shut-eye. Die what? Diurnal. That means animals that are active during the day, like you, Henry. Hmm. Looks like the working day is over for these guys. But I'm still wide awake. Some animals are waking up just when other animals are getting ready to go to bed. And those spring hairs you were counting are just getting out of bed. They're just one of the real animals of the night. You mean there's like a day shift and a night shift? That kind of thing? You got it. Exactly that kind of thing. Many creatures have adapted to life at night. You mean like a vampire? Or a bunch of vampires? No, Henry. Those are flying foxes. Huh? Sure. And I'm a flying lizard. No, those are bats called flying foxes. That's because they look like foxes, but they can fly. All bats are nocturnal and sleep through the daylight. These sometimes sleep for up to 19 hours a day. Excuse me. 19 hours? That's a lot of hanging around. These bats find that darkness helps protect them. There aren't many birds of prey around at night that eat bats, so they're safe to fly and feed. Feed on what? Lizards? Don't worry. Flying foxes eat fruit. Like what? Fruit of the gloom? Time to see what being a nighttime animal is like, Henry. Okay. I love the nightlife. I got to boogie. No problem. Woohoo! Uh, I can't see a thing. Who's there? Could you see those owls in the dark? They sure could see you. Owls have great night vision. Mm, I've changed my mind. Turn on the lights. These are kinkajous. You haven't seen them before. Of course I haven't. I'm a daytime animal. Cut that out. I thought you loved the nightlife. Oh, I've changed my mind. Rats love their nightlife. Mm, you dirty rat. Henry, people have long been afraid of rats, but rats are also afraid of people. That's one reason why they and many other rodents come out while we're asleep. I guess to be nocturnal, you got to like the dark a lot more than I do. It can be kind of creepy. It's okay, Henry. I still don't like this nighttime world. It's full of rats and spiders and ghosts and ghoulies and vampires. Help! Bats, Henry, all hunting at night. These knock-a-toodle guys are really scary. Nocturnal animals don't mean to scare you. If you think they look strange, that's probably because their bodies are specially adapted to life in the dark. It's just how they've evolved. 
Bats like this hammerhead may look weird to you, but since the only thing it eats is fruit, there's no need to worry. Unless you're a banana. Yikes! Who knows what lurks in the hearts of nocturnal animals? Look, there's an aardwolf. What? Werewolf? Where? Not a werewolf, an aardwolf. Oh, they're not scary. Exactly, but they are scared, as you can see. Poor little things. Even though they've got a scary-sounding name, the art wolf is a gentle creature. Ooh, that's hard to believe. Art wolf means earth wolf, but it isn't a wolf at all. It's related to the hyena, but lives in burrows and feeds on termites that only come out at night. It licks up around a quarter of a million termites each night. A quarter of a million? That's amazing! Even though it looks like a fierce hyena, the art wolf is one of Africa's most timid animals. Can we shed a little light on the subject? What is up with these moths? Why are they always bumping into light bulbs? Can't they see them? Bright lights dazzle and confuse most nighttime animals, especially moths. They're more used to the soft light of the moon. But other nighttime animals, like our friends the bats, need no light at all. Most bats can beam special sound waves out in front of them, like sonar. And their sensitive ears can hear those sounds reflected back from objects, which tell them how far away they are. And that's how they find their food. Ground control to Major Tom. A bat's special sonar system can pinpoint a flying meal in total darkness. The sound they use is a high-pitched clicking, but our ears aren't sensitive enough to hear it. Did you hear that? Yes, Henry. But bat sounds are much higher than that. Not all nighttime creatures have the bat's amazing ability. Some have large, highly sensitive eyes to see by the light of the silvery moon. The big eyes of the bush baby means it can see as well in the dark as people can see in the day. I spy with my big eyes. Lunch. With many animals, the bigger the eye, the more light they can detect. All the better to see you with. And all the better to eat you with. Hey, what's that? A toothpick? Close. A stick insect. And our dessert special this evening is beetle a la leaf. Right. But the bush baby isn't giving up on the main course. Stick insect supreme. That's a big mouthful. Maybe you should skip the main course and go straight for the dessert. What an amazing jump! He's left without paying the check. Bush babies can leap up to 15 feet. They need to see well to judge distance. I see. I mean, they see real good. Other creatures have good night sight too, like this northern spotted owl. Does he use his eyes to spot mice? Yes, Henry. But he also uses his super sharp ears to pinpoint his prey. All the better to hear you with. Owls have one ear higher than the other. This helps them to locate the exact position of a potential meal. That's amazing! There's no hiding from such an awesome nocturnal predator. Mm, this is the bit where I shut my eyes! I know what you mean, but wild animals don't kill for fun. They hunt to live. They also need to feed their babies. Excuse me. This chick's parents will have to feed it over 200 mice before it's able to hunt for itself.
Henry, it's time for your special report. Henry, time for your report. Come here. You are ready, aren't you? No. We're waiting for your report on the wisdom of the owl. You are prepared, aren't you? Ahem, sure. Owls are, well, um, ah, perhaps this poem will sum it up. The owl and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. They took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound note. Now, wait a minute. An owl is big buddies with a cat? No way. The only place a cat likes a bird is in its stomach. How wise could this owl be? He even went boating. When everyone knows that birds get seasick. Henry. And a pea green boat is enough to make anyone lose their lunch. You don't use money to wrap up food. You don't know where it's been. And mixing coins with honey, crazy. But that's owls for you. Believe me, wise old owls aren't wise. The only reason people think they're smart is because they look like they're wearing glasses. Now, does that make them rocket scientists? Rocket scientists? I know some very bright animals who've never gone near a pair of glasses. Besides, glasses don't make you clever. It's the reading that does that. And how often do you see an owl with a book? Hardly ever. Well, uh... Exactly! The wise old owl! Ha! That's my report, and don't forget it's straight from the lizard's mouth! You really think anybody's going to believe that? Yeah! Well, Henry, for once, you might be right. Excuse me? There actually is no proof that owls are clever. It seems that owls aren't very good at learning new things. Many other birds learn much more easily. So they wouldn't do well in school? Probably not. Henry, owls don't go to school. Well, maybe they know everything they need to know already. Maybe, Henry. After all, they are very successful nighttime birds. Ooh, one more thing. Did you know that owls have eyes that are so big they can't move them like you or I can? No, really? They have to turn their whole heads to look at something new. I did not know that! <laughs> Nocturnal animals use the cover of darkness to forage for food. Eating all night long? I could get into that. I'm gonna forage in the fridge. Hey! It's a raccoon. Eating garbage? Not exactly a gourmet, is he? Raccoons will eat almost anything, often raiding garbage cans for midnight snacks. You're lucky to have a fridge. Most animals have to find food wherever they can. These rats and mice are looking for leftovers, but the cat's looking for them. Mm, I'll just have a nocturnal pizza to go. Extra olives! Animals collect food, too. This pouch rat stores all the fruit it can find in its cheek pouches. That's amazing. Out in the open, where this nighttime rodent finds food, there's always the chance of being discovered by a predator. So it makes good sense for the pouched rat to collect as much food as it can as quickly as possible and eat later when it's safe back home. At night, there's a whole world of animals looking for food. Here's your old friend, the spring hare. Has he been snacking all night? Yes, but spring hares have to be alert between mouthfuls. What's that? It's an African serval cat out hunting. Spring hare surprise is on the menu! Whoops, that dessert just deserted. Now the serval uses its sensitive ears to find a new dish in the long grass. If it can't hear anything, it can always sniff out its prey. Talk about fast food! But the serval hasn't given up on his meal yet. Excuse me! The serval's long legs and neck help him see over the grass. It's his keen eyesight, as well as his hearing and sense of smell, that make him such an effective nighttime predator. That gerbil's a cool customer! He stopped for a snack. There's no time for seconds. And now it's time for the amazing Golden Gecko Award for the all-time best nighttime animal. Third place bronze medal goes to the tiny Tarsier, a little guy with big eyes. Well, you'd think he'd wake up for his award. 
Second place silver medal to the King of Jew, a bigger guy with bigger eyes and the biggest sweet tooth of all nighttime animals, earning him the nickname Honey Bear. But my Golden Gecko Award for the all-time best amazing nighttime animal goes to the Greater Bush Baby. Why not the Little Bush Baby? Because the Greater Bush Baby is greater. Here's looking at you, kid. The Greater Bush Baby can jump more than five times its own height straight up in the air. Its favorite foods are fruit, the sugary gum of acacia trees, and insects like this moth. Wow, what a mixture. Bush babies can live up to 10 years and spend most of their time up in the trees, safe from predators that live on the ground. The bush baby, so agile, it can even catch a net as it flies through the air. Beautifully adapted for nocturnal life and my all-time best amazing nighttime animal. Of course, nighttime is also made for love. Stars and constellations have always been linked to romance, but I've never heard them being romantically linked to a lizard. If you don't mind me saying so, this is what I call a match made in heaven. Yeah, whatever. This is a heavenly body if I've ever seen one. I know nighttime is for lovers, Henry, but just calm uh, down. Where'd she go? Why are we looking at the moon anyway? The moon is another heavenly body that really does have a strong effect on animals. Excuse me, that sounds like total lunacy. The lunar cycle, or the monthly changes you can see in the moon, are a trigger for all sorts of nocturnal animal activities. On just one night a year, when the moon and tides are exactly right, the Palolo worms in the Pacific Ocean rise from the depths to spawn. As they rise, local people catch them by the thousands to eat as a great delicacy. Excuse me? The worms split in two, and half of each one rises to the surface, with the male and female halves mixed to produce new worms. That's if they're not eaten. How do they know when to catch them? The Samoans can predict just when the worms will appear by watching the moon and tides. Many other animals go courting by moonlight. Why all the hubbub, bub? Nighttime is when all these male frogs start to sing. It's how they call out for a mate. There are 500 different species of tree frog, and each makes its own distinctive call. 500 calls to make? What a phone bill! Not phones, Henry. They call for mates by using their inflatable throat sacs. And they all lived happily ever after. After a heavy rain in Africa, the moonlight also triggers the activity of other creatures. The rain softens the ground so that these winged termites can escape from their mound and fly to their nighttime rendezvous. These termites only get one chance to fly, so they use the full moon like an alarm clock to make sure they meet their partners on time. As soon as they land to mate, their wings drop off. Amazing! It's a regular blizzard of termites! But they're not the only animals hanging around these parts tonight. It's the creature from the Black Lagoon! No, Henry, it's an African bullfrog, ready to take advantage of millions of lovesick termites. The bullfrog is quick to snag any unlucky termite in range of his tongue. But there are plenty to go around. Many more nocturnal creatures arrive for a moonlit feast. There's the bush baby again. She's a real termite gourmet. This bat-eared fox isn't far behind. His big ears allowed him to hear the termites from far away. It's an all-you-can-eat termite night at the Moonlight Cafe. Henry! <coughs> Huh? What are you doing? I wasn't sleeping. It's my new back therapy. I think you're finally getting tired, Henry. Admit it. Mm. 
You know, I think being nocturnal is a great idea after all. You can have a midnight snack every night if you can keep your eyes open. But those midnight snacks have to be over before dawn. Mom's waiting anxiously for her two babies. Ah, that owl's waiting up too. Mom's heard. So is the owl. Who'll get there first? One great leap for Bush Baby Kind. Home free. But where's the other one? It's a race against time for the mother bush baby. She has to find her other baby before the owl does. Phew! Just in time! Safe! Soon the dawn will break. The sun will come up. For all the amazing nocturnal animals, morning is the time to go to sleep. Excuse me, I'm pushed. Being nocturnal is hard work. I keep been counting wizards. Well, it sounds like you're ready for bed, Henry. So, all the nighttime animals have come to the end of a hard day's night. Time for those die-earning animals to get up. Die-earnal, Henry. Yes, it's time for the day shift to take over. The animals who've been asleep all night have to get ready for a new day. At least they won't be bothered by bats. I think I prefer being a daytime animal. <sighs> Henry, sounds like it's time you went to bed. <sighs> Henry, bedtime. Sweet dreams. You've seen enough daytime and nighttime animals to make any lizard tired. Here comes the day shift, ready for breakfast. Breakfast? Excuse me, but I don't think I'm cut out to be a nighttime animal if it means missing breakfast. Sleep well, Henry, but you'd better wake up before sundown or you'll be spending another sleepless night with those amazing nighttime animals.